congratulations on your film being selected to, to screen tonight as part of the Friday Fright Nights. Tell us a little bit about how you feel about your uh, film coming out into the light of day once again and being screened globally as part of this Monster Fest event. Oh, I'm, I'm just over them. So, um, you know, I, I uh, put, put everything I had into making the film some, you know, 30-odd years ago. Uh, and um, and it's just it's just a joy that uh, it's found, you know, this opportunity, a couple of others uh, in recent times for, for uh, to be to be seen by other people and uh, people that perhaps hadn't hadn't had a chance uh, that many years ago to, to check it out yeah going back 30 years ago how did the film come about like it was your your first feature film that you directed how did it all come about for you 30 years ago um a little uh, a slightly longer ago than that i was uh completing the swinburne film and television course i was uh in the graduating class of uh 84 and uh the main uh you know we do a major production for our third year and that the smoke and the idea for smoke and came to me and i sort of pitched that uh as what i would like to make as my film and very fortunately the lecturers there were much smarter than me and could see immediately that it was not re not realistic to try and achieve as a student film so they said no and i had to come up with something else and came up with my um films tarzan south yarra adventure um and then a couple of years later, after working in the industry, um, you know, for a while, uh, Film Victoria had a, a grant um, program, and I put Smoke in. I got Smoke and fully written and, and, and submitted that because um, it had just been sort of hanging there, wanting to be made, and uh, that was the first chance that I'd got to do it. So uh, I was uh, lucky enough to to be supported. Then uh, I was one of the first uh, round of the independent filmmakers fund that they had then. And um, yeah, yeah, they uh, actually uh, gave me more money than I thought I needed, but um, it was still quite a tight budget and quite a tight schedule and everything like that. It was really pretty hard work getting smoke them onto the screen. Um, but uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to recruit a crew and cast of superhumans that all went well above and beyond the call of duty and uh, uh, you know uh, without their help um, and without those exact people I don't think smoking would have got made yeah we went through a bit of a period here in Australia where the funding bodies seemed a little bit scared to fund cult films did you have did they have any issues with the fact that the film was a cult film back in those days well, I think cult film is something that, um, uh, you know, is it, 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 it's decided after the fact, really. It, yeah. I mean, it, was a, um, it was a slightly edgy film, but the short film scene in those days, that was kind of what it was. It was the films that, um, uh, you know, um, the feature film scene seemed to really be more, more the forum for kind of slightly more down-the-line mainstream Entertainment's short film was where all the kind of rat bags um, found their their way of expressing themselves. Uh, it was it was sort of the norm to be kind of cultish and edgy. I mean, perhaps that's a slight oversimplification. There certainly were a lot of pretty straightforward short films, but uh, I didn't find that, that the funding bodies were too worried about you know slightly edgy kind of slightly. Um, uh, weird stuff in yeah. those days. Yeah. You mentioned being able to put together a superhuman cast and crew. Some of those cast members have gone on to, to find fame on their own. Tell us a little bit about how you went about casting this film back then. Um, well, the, the the film has sort of two... Uh, you know, it's an ensemble cast. There, there are a lot of sort of important characters, but um, there are a couple that are the co-leads, which um, are the two main organisers of the party that takes place in the bomb shelter. Um, uh, I, I had seen... Um, I, I was aware of Nick Needles, um, and uh, I was really kind of keen to, to see if I could get an opportunity to, to work with him, and uh, he, um, he, you know, in those days was... Um, uh, you know, was used... To, well, he, he deserved a lot more money than I was able to offer him, but he took a bit of a shine to the script and, and, and was able to kind of um, say yes. <laughs> and so that was a little bit of a coup. Um, and then the other lead, 
uh, the character whose name's Crawley. Um, I had it took a little bit longer. Um, I um, actually approached David Argue uh, and um, got a commitment out of him, and uh, then then a couple of things came up, and that just actually didn't didn't end up working out. Uh, and the next sort of choice was. Um, having done a lot of auditions and things was Rob Howard who is better known at least you know was better known in those days as uh, a production designer art director um, but you know he's a he's a great talent and uh, and and he was actually um, uh, on on the crew tentatively doing a bit of art department stuff uh, because Chris Kennedy, who was the production manager, was busy with another commitment. Anyway, this, the planets aligned and Rob um, was able to do it and uh, uh, I'm really glad that that was how it all worked out because I think he's terrific in, in that role. Yeah. Um, and then other other sort of smaller characters. Well, um, my student film I mentioned earlier, Tarzan South Yarra Adventure, um, we'd done... Uh, as a, as a film as a, a year at the film school, we sort of organised big open call auditions and and auditioned a whole bunch of people, many of whom hadn't hadn't sort of done much acting at all. And one of the people that really stood out to me was uh, a, a guy who was a sort of member, a part of the rock and roll scene, Fred Dugina. He um, uh, was leader of a band called Tombstone Hands, and um, some people that might ring a bell. Uh, and so he became uh, one of the stars of Tarzan South Yarra Adventure. The non-Tarzan <laughs> part was was Fred. Uh, in fact, he was in all three of my major student films. And the uh, um, the another guy who was a friend of a friend at the time, Mad Dog Bot, became Tarzan. And then when uh, I was looking around, there's a trio of kind of looters that ar- arrive late in the party. Um, and I thought, yep, Fred... Mad Dog, and then Danny Lilford uh, was pretty active in the theatre scene at that time, and uh, he was a great uh, third third part of that trio. Uh, so, you know, two thirds of the trio I'd, I'd worked with a lot before. Yep. And then very various other roles. Um, yeah, uh, it it was people that I or, or my friends had worked with that I knew, it just sort of jumped out, and to some extent, some of the roles were kind of written around them. Yep. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, it was sort of mix, mix and match, a little bit of auditioning, but um, you know, the bulk of it was people that I'd really liked working with, or or, or you know, even, even if I was on someone else's shoot, uh, and it was just you know a great chance to to sort of work with them again. Yeah, uh, tell us a little bit about the shoot itself as well. Like, was it a relatively easy shoot, or did you guys find some challenges when you had to shoot it? Yeah, look, I think I can honestly say it was the second hardest thing I've ever done in my life, um, <laughs> and uh, it was, uh, you know, a, a big, a big um, script like uh, the, you know, a reasonably ambitious sort of um, uh, challenge to to create the the bomb shelter itself, and then also a whole separate challenge was the, the scenes outside in the uh, devastated nuclear wasteland, and. Um, uh, and a lot of, you know, a large cast um, and a lot of sort of um, tricky things to to films, you know, modest little stunts here and there. But, you know, there was a fight scene which turned into a brawl that engulfed the party. It basically, it was just a list of all the all the trickiest things you could you could sort of write um, to, to um, push, a, you know, to push a crew to the limit to, to film in on a on a fairly limited um shoot i um i think it was kind of two and a half weeks it's a little hazy i don't think we had a full three weeks of shooting uh and so you know the minutes a day that had to be um had to be achieved and every shot was just complicated there was just the you know um most shots had you know a couple dozen people in frame and and that just makes it all difficult and uh when they had to be you know, had to have some degree of special makeup done, um, you know, and all you know, all the costuming, and, and then you know they have to be lit properly, and everything adds up uh, to just just um, tricky stuff that takes uh, takes a team of experts to do uh, yeah. in the time that we had available. Uh, yeah. 
It obviously didn't scare you off filmmaking because you've gone on to have a very successful career in um, film and television. But what would your advice be out there for young filmmakers who are looking to start their career with their first film, whether it be a feature or a short film? Um, look, I think you have to get it onto screen. Uh, in some ways, it's it's trickier these days because there's less... Um, uh, you know, overall, there's less support from government, less avenues for, for um, you know, government uh, uh, funding bodies to support you. But then on the flip side, um, technology has advanced so much that um, the amount of the filmmaking process that's completely possible for someone to do on their own and with, with domestic gear and at home has increased. So, uh, you know, swings and roundabouts... Um, uh, it, it's uh, there's, there's there's less resources available, but uh, you can do more with the ones with what is available. Yeah. So my my advice is, um, yeah, dream up an idea that gives that makes you that you're passionate about that you can kind of talk about for an hour straight to someone. That might be a good litmus test. <laughs> um, uh, even if it's a ten minute idea, you certainly need to be able to sort of gush about it, rave about it for an hour for you know to to um, uh, for, for it to really to be the, the, the thing that you're going to devote your life to for several months uh, and then just go for it and don't take an answer. Yeah, and Ray, of course, there's a little bit of an irony that this film is showing to people tonight who are in lockdown. So what would you, <laughs> what would you like to say to those people out there who want to tune in tonight and, and watch the film again? Look, uh, anything you can do uh, that involves lychees while you're in lockdown has got to be a good thing. Um, there's there's lychees at the end of the tunnel. Awesome. Well, Ray, thank you so much for chatting to us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. We wish you all the best of luck with the screening tonight and also the best of luck with your career at the moment as well. Thank you very much. It's been great to talk. And, um, yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to tonight's screening. Hope everyone watches. Awesome.